Yeah. Okay, so welcome everybody. So this is a continuation of Shamit's lectures. So just to remind you, he has got three more lectures, including today. So we will finish next Tuesday. Okay, Shamit, you can take over. Okay, thanks. So, uh, so I'll uh, start by doing uh, defining what a celestial uh, OPE is. OPE of conformal primary operators. Okay, so we know what these operators are. So suppose, let me just write down the basic definition as a mirroring transformation. Okay, so now, uh, so these operators, so that and uh, essentially the definition of the amplitude. So I can also define what the correlation functions um, of these operators are. And then we have the S metric. Okay, so now, uh, so we have these local operators like phi, some phi epsilon, h h bar, z z bar. Okay, and we can consider two two operators. So yeah, so this is the celestial sphere, which I call the CS2, S2, because since we are in four dimension, the sphere has two dimensions. So this is, and uh, I have uh, like two, uh, this is the sphere. Okay, so I have two, two operators located at Z1, Z1 bar, and Z2, Z2 bar, okay? Uh, with some, some quantum numbers like uh, this is say H1, H1 bar, and this is H2, H2 bar. And also epsilon is there to say whether it's incoming or outgoing. So now the point is that, uh, so we can of course uh, define the OP uh, and OP just corresponds to, you just bring them close together, okay? So you, have, you can have other insertions Okay, so you keep them fixed, but then you bring these uh, insertions at, at, at point one and two close together. And then basically what you, you can write is that, so we expect some structure uh, like say phi one, phi two, okay? It will be something like phi three plus some descendants. Okay, so phi three, so all they are all primaries. Okay, and there can definitely be more than one. So this phi three can basically it's a sum of primaries. Okay, so we expect a structure like this. But now uh, what we want to see is that what does OP? So the question is that what uh, does OPE correspond to? in the Fox space. On to in the momentum space or the Fox space picture, okay. In the momentum space. Okay, and the answer is that the OPE on, and basically 
the uh, answer to this is that OPE on the celestial sphere uh, is the same as collinear limit. in momentum space. Now why it is so? So that is also easy to see. Suppose I have, so let's consider massless uh, particles. Oh, what happened? Oh, just a minute. Ah, okay. Okay, so, oh. Okay, so let us now consider consider two massless particles. With momenta. Momenta say P1 mu and P2 mu, okay? So we can write down P1 so with our parameterization and let's consider both of them to be out, outgoing say, okay? I mean, it, uh, that doesn't really matter, but uh, well, it matters at the end, but uh, for, the, for this uh, argument, it does not really matter. So one plus Z1, Z1 bar, Z1 plus Z1 bar, And similarly, I have P2 mu. Okay. Now, what is this object? So you can define, of course, this object. This is essentially so, or in other words, uh, basically the point we know, I mean, basically from the first lecture that the point ZZ bar uh, gives the direction of motion of the particle in the asymptotic region, okay? And also, so ZZ bar also uh, gives the direction of motion, uh, gives the direction of motion, and and it specifies a point on the celestial sphere. Okay, so you can see. So now. Uh, so basically, we can draw this picture. So call this is the celestial sphere, and take two points. Say so call it Z1, Z1 bar. This is Z2, Z2 bar, and these are the momenta. Say P2, and this is P1. Okay. So so these are the so basically, you can write uh, you can write it also parameterize it as omega times one plus uh, z z bar one comma in hat. So this is the three vector which gives you the direction of motion. Okay, so in hat is a unit vector which points. I mean, these are discussed in the first lecture. So now from here, you can see that if you bring this one and two close together, then this you are bringing the direction of motion of these two particles close together. So that means, so this uh, picture actually tells you that basically that the OPE on the celestial sphere is the same as a collinear because they're like moving almost in the same direction. Okay.
Now, the interesting and the important point is that just like soft factorization, like we know one kind of factorization of the AS matrix, so just like say soft factorization, We also have Shab, 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 uh, yeah. Can you just remind me one thing? This uh, Z one going to Z two. I understand what happened to Omega one. Also goes to Omega two. Uh, no, no, no. Can you go up? No, no, uh -huh. that is not true. So, okay. so we we'll come to that actually. So that is not required actually. Oh. So it is just the direction of motion. So basically, if you write this uh, i as Omega i z i z i bar in i then in uh, uh, then basically the uh, as you take z1 z uh, to z2 so what happens is that n1 had becomes on the other side okay. okay but the point is that this magnitude uh, has nothing to do uh, because well, the z's become same but then this factor of omega is there uh, okay. which i mean which is completely free okay. So you don't do anything to that, that actually. Okay, so we also have collinear factorization. So basically, we have two kinds of uh, important factorizations in this thing. One is this soft factorization, the other one is this co collinear fa factorization. And the point is that this collinear factorization ensures sorry that celestial op exist Okay, so this is important. So it is the collinear factorization. Okay, so I'll uh, give you now example of this thing actually. So, okay, so this uh, was basically uh, so what we we'll do is that um, so this is the leading term in the OPE of two positive helicity outgoing gravitons. Graviton primates. Okay. And this will, this will be, and this was done in this paper. Um, okay, so these references are all there in the uh, in the file, which is already there in the page, in the home page. Okay. So what does one do in this case? So let us consider, so basically, sorry. So consider and consider a tree level. So let's, for simplicity, I'm, I'm always talking about the tree level amplitude. So let us consider three level scattering amplitudes. Having basically two uh, positive helicity outgoing gravitons. Because we need to find out the OP between these two. Okay, 
So we denote this scattering amplitude by say say it's an endpoint function. S plus plus and the rest we don't need. And this plus plus stands for the two positive helicity outgoing graviton. So let me just highlight this. So we have P1, the corresponding momenta, and the rest of the things we don't need to specify. Okay. So now the statement is that so what is uh, the collinear factorization? So as we saw, so you can parameterize this as. Okay, so as in one becomes parallel okay, to in two, uh, this amplitude factorizes in the following way. So this is at the level of the usual uh, in terms of space uh, scattering amplitude. So this is given by this expression. So this is an n minus one point S matrix and one positive helicity soft graviton outgoing with momentum P. Okay, so where this P is the sum of this momenta, okay, and omega P is omega one plus omega two. Okay, so this was actually done uh, long ago, actually, I think 22, 23 years. Okay. So basically, the picture is that you have this this object, so some scattering amplitude. And you have two gravitons with momentum P1 and P2. Okay, now in the linear limit, so this object, which is this here, so this is essentially the scattering amplitude uh, with uh, like this. And then you have one graviton coming out with momentum P1 plus P2 and, and the helicity plus. And just like the soft factor, uh, you have some universal multiplicative factor, uh, which is given by this uh, object. And this kappa is 32 pi G meter. Okay which will say uh, equal to two, because that just simplifies this kappa y2 to one and then one. Okay, so this is the, so this is essentially, you can see that this is um, similar, to, I mean, well, this is, this is another fa factorization and uh, this is crucial for defining the OP. Okay, so this is for the, so we are now interested in the, leading term okay we'll talk about the sub leading terms and those will involve the 
uh, normal states and all these things. But for the time being, we just focus on this stuff. Okay, so now we so we have this object. Uh, so this relation And here, okay. So now we want to now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I have one question. Here we are take considering the uh, MHP amplitudes, isn't it? Mm, not now, actually. So this has. So this is true true for any any, any amplitude actually. Any amplitudes with uh, two collinear momenta, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, collinear grad gravitons actually. Yeah. That means we can take also s minus minus with two negative helicity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we can do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one positive and one negative we can't take because of the collinearity. Right. No, no, that also you can do. Okay, we can do. Okay. Yeah, so that can also be done. So I'm just going, uh, so for the timing, I'm doing plus plus plus, uh, then actually at the end, I'll just state, I mean, for the plus, uh, for the plus minus and the minus minus case. Okay, so in the minus minus, it will just be the, like the complex conjugate of this. So it will just be Z12 by Z bar 1. Okay. Yes. Yes. And plus minus case, it will be some slightly. Yeah. So, okay. but the point is that otherwise, um, this is uh, straightforward. But the basic thing is just like this. So, I just want to just just illustrate what is the central point, and then actually, uh, at the end, I, I can mention. Okay. Thank you. What, yeah. Okay. So now uh, we want to go to the celestial sphere. CS2 by doing Mellin transformation. Okay. Or basically we want to take the OP. Okay. So so the Mellin amplitude you can define like this. And then we have some bunch of operators. Okay. And this Okay, this, this corresponds to these two, and then I have a bunch of integrals into the S matrix. So the S matrix is like uh, P1, both are outgoing, and we are taking both of these to be outgoing. So P1, we have P1. P2, uh, well, uh, more exact specification of this will be like uh, okay. 
so now uh, take okay so this is actually well so let me take basically okay so now take z1 to z2 so this is okay so i'll explain uh, this is called sometimes holomorphic soft limit uh keeping okay i mean why this is required fixed okay so in this case the leading term that you get actually well i mean this holomorphic okay so i will come to this i mean that why this uh, holomorphic soft limit is required required uh, that you first take z1 to z2 and then you pick up the and now take z1 to z2 keeping z1 bar and z2 bar fixed now in this limit the leading or the dominant contribution comes from this term okay so that means so the dominant contribution will come from this term which has basically so in this case in order to do this what we have to do is that we have to treat the z and z bar as in, independent okay so in the real case z z bar is a complex conjugate of z but in this case so it is well so it is useful to take z and z bar as independent uh, com complex numbers uh, and that makes life much simpler and the point is that at the end of the day you can come back to the real case by if you take say set z bar as the complex conjugate of z and the point is that you can see that if we take z and z bar as independent then this z uh, so if z bar by z is uh, if z bar is a complex conjugate of z then z bar by z is it's it is just a phase okay so you don't have any singularity in this case because it is z bar by z so you can bring z1 close to z2 but still uh, this is a phase okay so you don't uh, hit any kind of singularity but the point is that if you take z and z bar to be independent and then if you say do the holomorphic uh, op where you bring z1 close to z2 but you fix z bar 1 and z bar 2 then you can see that there is clearly a hole in z1 2 and this term will blow up and this term will give you the maximum con contribution when you take z1 to z2 uh, keeping z bar 1 and z bar 2 fixed for example what you can have is that you can have term like say some some order z bar uh, uh some order one term or z z or order z one two term but as z one goes to z two uh, those terms are uh, sub dominant and the main contribution comes from this this term which is z bar one two by z one two okay so that is essentially the point actually so you can see that so in this limit uh, we can write we can just replace this S matrix. So this S matrix by this, okay? By this uh, factorized form. And that is what essentially we want to do. So what we get is this. Uh, so this is minus the infinity, sorry. Um, D omega one 
d omega 2 omega 1 to the power delta 1 minus 1 okay and then into this uh, form which is minus z bar 1 2 by z 1 2 and then omega p square by omega 1 omega 2 and then you have this factorized form okay you can actually have higher order terms in the order z1 to the power zero other terms but as z1 goes to z2 with z bar one to fixed and then this is the then this term is the main contribution so that's why you can keep it but these are the subleading terms and we'll see that and they play in, uh, in because they determine all these uh, scattering amplitudes, the, the MHB amplitudes, but for the time being, we focus on this part. Okay, so now actually, so how do we do this? So this omega P, uh, this was omega one plus omega two. Okay, so now let us make a change of variable. So we take omega one to be omega p times t, omega two to be omega p times one minus t. And you can see that if you, so this is consistent with this, is that uh, omega p is sum of omega one and uh, omega two. And this t of course lies between zero and one. Okay, now if you do this change of, of variable, then it is just, you can easily check that this is true. Sorry. Okay, so now uh, if you do this, so you can substitute this omega one is omega p times t and omega two is omega p times one minus t. So that cancels this omega p square and then you are left with the, uh, so finally uh, the integral that we get is this. So omega p and then one omega p to the power delta one plus delta two minus two. Okay, that is all the powers of omega p. And then you have dt. Okay, and then you get t. You get uh, one over omega one, one over omega two. So basically you get t to the power delta one minus two, one minus t to the power delta one delta two minus two, okay, into the n minus one point is metric. Okay, so this is the integral. Now note that this object, this does not depend on P. Okay, so basically, so so this depends only on 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 omega p, because this capital p um, you can parameter write as, as some omega p or one. I mean, this is the leading term, and you can just take the um, one and two to be the same points. So, and then. OK, 
okay so this does not depend on t so finally that means so this integral then so uh, we get this so this t integral comes out and then we have this integral which is d omega p and then we also have the other integrals into omega p to the power delta 1 delta 2 minus 1 because i have a omega p here into this s matrix okay so this integral so this is this give by this beta function euler beta function so this you can check in for example just check the which video okay that is the easiest so I mean, easiest to find okay so this is the beta function uh, and okay um, by the way so okay so this is the can write this as d oh sorry we have this factor of um, this one also so finally uh, with all this we get minus z bar one two by z one two this comes out then the beta function Okay, and then the in transform of this integral. Uh, okay. So this beta function is just this integral times this. So this uh, then, and then you have this integral. So this is the Mellin transform. So all the omega i's are fixed, and then you have omega. Sorry. delta one okay so this you can see that this integral is essentially g plus delta one plus delta two say you can write it as z to z to bar and then the product of all the i's i mean that remains unchanged okay so after this manipulation, what we get is following. So let me clearly write it. So this collinear factorization we saw gives rise to the OP structure. So now I will make it more explicit. So this, so this becomes the leading term, the pole term in Z one two. Okay. And then Plus, there are higher order terms. Okay. This. So now you can see that since now this since this is true for any scattering and am, am, amplitude, 
okay so this essentially gives now this is true now true for any scattering amplitude okay and that tells me that we have this op Plus higher terms. Okay. Now this is essentially a very so this is this is the first OP um, that you encounter basically in the on the sphere. Okay. That two if I have two positive felicity uh, graphic terms or this you can write uh, in this symbolic way as plus plus goes to plus. Okay. Okay, so similarly, actually, you can look at this uh, paper, this paper by Barn et al., Barn, Dixon, Perelstein, and Rosowski. That I mean, you can uh, so similarly. So here I did the plus plus. Okay, uh, similarly, you can uh, of course do the plus, or you can do the minus. Minus, and it turns out that this leaving here will just be this. Okay, and there will be no difference between here. And then, if you take the holomorphic limit, this holomorphic OP, then plus minus will go like minus. So, this is remember, so this is for the holomorphic OP because uh, what happens is that plus minus that gives you both plus and minus okay okay basically yeah, well I'm... so plus minus if you do then you will get a plus and minus also okay but then once you take the holomorphic op then this actually this term goes away and then you are left with plus minus going to minus okay in fact the point is that uh, i'll just state the result so let me just state the result what happens in the case of plus minus so minus delta 2 so this is in the holomorphic op limit okay so this will be minus z bar 1 2 y z 1 2 b into negative velocity okay and in the case of minus minus what you would li like to do is that you would like to take an anti holomorphic op limit okay because you should have basically it's the complex conjugate of plus plus so the z bar one two by z one two that will be replaced by z one two by z bar one two so if you want to actually isolate that term then you should take z bar one going to z bar two fixing z one and z two okay so that is the thing so this is the plus minus uh, case actually so but then there are of course uh, higher order terms okay and those terms will be actually we will talk about them in the next lectures in the next two lectures but before this i mean if there is any question
at this stage i can take it or actually i can just uh, well i have some things to say actually i mean the important point so then the second uh, thing that i want to talk about which will be required here is basically uh, the op between the currents between the super translation and the sl to c bar currents and a conformal primary okay so well so this actually i have to talk about this so actually in the notes which is there in the air, so they they are actually i have also discussed this holomorphic op uh, so you can also read that and then actually i want to talk about this so this basically the reference that i will be here is essentially this mg uh, paper so i'll not be explaining all the equations but the point is that uh, well so let me actually go through uh this a bit so let let us start with this thing called the between the uh, leading soft operator which was this because the leading soft operator is uh, basically the generator of the super translation and some other operators Okay, so how this object is defined? So if you remember, so this is given by this conformal soft limit. Okay. And the point is that, so let me first uh, give you the result. Okay, so, and we saw that this so this is uh, this we wrote in terms of two currents uh, so where this p0 z are the super translation currents okay so now we want to find out this op So what is there? Now, so this, of course, so if you are uh, familiar with the two-dimensional conformal field theory, then you know what to do. So basically, start we start start from from the leading soft theorem or the word identity. or the super, trans super translation word identity, okay? So this is the... So that was given by this. So,
sorry. So this is the word identity or the or the this is the leading soft theorem or the word identity or the super translation word identity. Okay. And suppose I want to find out the OPE between these a, okay and okay. So you can look at this uh, earlier lecture. So please PK. So this was defined as. This is the dimension raising parameter. So, okay. So now, so what do we do? So the same thing that we do in two-dimensional conformal field theory. I mean, well, I mean that is the only way to do this. Is that suppose I want to find out the OP between say these operators and say there's the first operator. Okay, so what I have to do is that I have to take this ZZ bar close to Z1, Z1 bar and expand the right hand side in powers of z minus z1 and z1 bar minus z and z z bar minus z1 bar okay okay so so bring z uh, z bar close to, so here we are not taking any kind of holomorphic A because we are not just interested in one particular term, but we want to give all the terms, okay? So we just have to, we just take, we just bring ZZ bar close to Z1, Z1 bar, okay? And then the second thing is that they expand the RHS of the word identity. In in powers of Z minus Z one and Z bar minus Z bar one. Okay, so if you do that, so this expansion is easy. So you have, so well, for example, you have a term, the first term, for example, is Z bar minus Z bar one by Z minus Z one. So you don't have anything to expand there. But, but then, then you have a term like this, say for example, uh, Z bar minus Z bar two by Z minus Z two. So how do you, I mean, it is just simple. So you will write it as Z bar minus Z bar one plus Z bar one minus Z bar two and Z minus Z one plus Z one minus Z two. Okay, now, so, so this Z, uh, Z bar minus Z bar one and Z minus Z one, both of them are much smaller than Z, Z bar one minus Z bar two and Z one minus Z two, that's the o, o P that, that, uh, that this, these two points, so you have a bunch of, uh, insertions, but in the OP limit, uh, the distance between these two these two op op operators are less than the distance be between one uh, between say 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 one or two from from the rest. Okay, so you can just expand this thing. So you can take it outside and expand it in powers of uh, both are small actually. So you just have to do a double expansion in terms of Z bar minus Z bar one and Z minus Z one. So you do it for each term and what you will be left to it can be written, I will write it in this particular form and then I'll try to explain actually. Uh, 
that uh, how uh, this looks like. Okay. Okay, so doing this, we get uh, <clears throat> let me isolate this piece because So A here is an integer. Now here actually first encounter uh, the important things which are the super translation descendants of the, because they are local. Yeah, so. Then okay, and then Okay, so let me actually just write the next expression, but I will explain it next time, okay, in the next lecture, because I think it will take some time, uh, basically. Okay, so if you look at this expression, so you can see that this is an expansion in powers of z minus z1 and z bar minus z bar one. And you and the point is that you don't have any, so you, again, you can say, just think of the z and z bar as, as independent. And you can see that you have a pole in z minus z1. Uh, but you don't have any pool in uh, z bar minus uh, in z bar minus z bar one, and the point is that you have only a finite number of, uh, and you have only a finite number of term, uh, finite number of powers of z bar minus z bar one. That is, uh, so this is the order one term, and this is the well, I mean this is the order uh, zero term, and this is the order one. Term, okay, and what are these objects? So these objects, these are the so these are the modes of these uh, super translation cartons that we defined uh, last time. And let me just say that these objects, this p minus a minus one, acting on say phi epsilon h h bar z z bar in general. So and Sorry, I just need two more minutes. Uh, so these are the super translation descendants. 
just like you have virasoro descendants in the two dimensional conformal field theory so here you have the super translation descendants i will explain these things in the next lecture more and uh, 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 super translation descendants for this a you can see this is greater than equal to p okay. so these are uh, this is one of the things and the other point is that these correlation functions are uh, important what i mean is that suppose you have this object e minus 1 comma 0 phi epsilon 1 h1 h1 bar z1 z1 bar so this is a descendant so what you have now in, inserted in the correlation co function uh, is a descendant of the prime primary and just like in two dim uh, in uh, 2d conformal field theories so these correlation functions are also can be written as in terms of the correlation functions of the primaries for example this the correlation function of this descendant has this structure so so this is extremely easy to obtain so this is you just expand the powers of z minus z1 and z bar minus um, z bar 1 and this is what we will obtain okay so you can see that this descendant the co correlation function uh, with the insert insertion of a super translation descendant can be written in terms of some uh, some 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 object act, acting on the in point function so this is just like uh, in the case of the two dimensional conformal field theory that you have all these descendants and you can construct the co correlation function of them in terms of the correlation functions of the primaries except that in this case you have new kinds of symmetries which are not usually found in two dimensional conformal field theory but the point is that they more or less work in the same way so this let me just write down the other descendant co correlator and these expressions are extremely important because these will appear finally in the differential uh, equations for the scattering amplitudes because these descendants are will appear in the in the null state relations okay so this is essentially so again so you you have this descendant so you have these two kinds of insertion of descendant so this is a descendant this is also a super translation descendant and the co correlation function with the insertion of a super translation descendant is again determine in terms of the co correlation function of the primaries so all the things are known but you have some pre factors which are acting on this okay so this is exactly like what happens in to be conformal field theory and you are more you may be familiar with the like the virasoro uh, descendants like l minus m5 or n greater than equal to 1 okay so these are and then you can consider correlation functions with this insertion and then you have some operator which you can obtain from the stress tensor word identity acting on phi phi i 
okay so exactly what it's saying so it is exactly like that so next so in the next lecture i will explain it more and also i will write down the op i mean well i mean this is so this expression of course is equivalent to the op because it is already in the factorized form you can see that and this is true for any any scattering amplitude okay in fact this is true also for the loop loop and amplitude okay so this 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 particular thing okay uh so now the point is that yeah so yeah so i think i will stop here so next time actually i will explain this thing more and then in the last lecture i will talk about some applications of this i mean how to determine some set of scattering amplitude uh, from these from these things actually okay so i'll stop yeah so i mean the pks are uh, differential operators are they no no this these these pks are not actually so these pks are just uh, they raise the dimension by half half so this is what they do actually yeah so this is uh, what they do yeah okay and these operators so these differential operators of course will come at the end so i will write it in mm -hmm. okay Okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah, uh, I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, so, in the holomorphic soft limit that you have taken, when z one goes to z two and z bar one and z bar two are fixed, how does that yeah. reconcile with the p uh, one and p two becoming collinear? Well, I mean, in the same way, in the holomorphic way, actually. So the point is that as you may well, so one way. so you don't really need to take uh, take this i mean as i said so in in this case for example you, you can see here i am not taking any kind of hol holomorphic okay so there the holomorphic in fact the point was that i can also in a sense skip uh, this thing the skip uh, the holomorphic soft limit if i just say that i have some other terms okay so they are actually i just wanted to pick up the the main contribution the z bar by z in that thing okay but yes, uh, uh, that, as okay. And so for example let me show uh, let's look at this this one so look at this op okay so just forget about this so you can write it so you can see that you have this term z bar minus z bar 1 by z minus z 1 so you have suppose you want to pick up only this term okay so yes. you have to take z going to z1 you can take so you can now treat so once you have this you can treat z and z bar independently and then you can take z going to z1 fixing z bar and z bar 1 and then of course you don't have any other term like you don't have a term like 1 over z minus z1 square so this is the only term that you will be able to okay. so uh, is it yes. is it in in a way like we are taking z1 going to z2 and z1 bar going to z2 bar but but z1 and z2 are much closer than z1 bar and z2 bar are is it something like this well so the point is that you keep the distance between the separation between z1 bar and z2 bar uh, finitely so you, you are not basically expanding in okay. bar 1 2 you can say. i see I mean, in, yeah, in uh, that case but but in this case we are actually expanding in all powers of z minus z1 and z bar minus z bar okay yeah this case i understand yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so now okay. if i go from here to if i want to pick up this contribution then i have to do this play this extra game that i like yeah, i bring I it close to z1 but don't change z bars okay thank you Okay, so let's thank Shomik uh, for today's lecture, and then we meet again on uh, Thursday, same time. Hopefully, uh, uh, situation in Bhuvneshwar allowing. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So actually, just the point is that the, yeah. So the notes are already there. So some of these yeah. things are like rough, uh, well, probably not very really clear. So you can look at that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah.